Hey, this is a quick video to show you um, something that I think is missing from the P5Play Learn website. So P5Play is a library for uh, P5JS that helps you make games. And uh, it's got this great Learn website. But one of the things that seems to be kind of missing is uh, if you go to the Tiles section, it only gives you an example of how you can make tiles using uh, boxes that you've drawn. But it doesn't really show you that you can use the same uh, thing with images and maybe images that you'd get from a tile set. So if we look at a file here that I've got, uh, it's got a bunch of different tiles in the same way that you'd have a sprite sheet. Uh, if we go back to the learn website and look at sprite, the sprite section and look for, uh, oh, actually it's under animation, animation and uh, sprite write sheets so you have a uh, file that contains all the different versions of that sprite and then you can kind of play it back in an animation well you can use that same thing with tiles to get those uh, little tiles to show up uh, as um, instead of instead of the little rectangles that are shown here so uh, the way that I'm going to do that is just kind of start over I've got the file this is where I downloaded it from there are some free ones around make sure you either pay or credit the people who are sharing them and uh, the thing that I'm going to do is just have a I'm going to use the preload function to load that image so this is not anything to do with p5 play this is just loading an image and the reason why we're doing it this way is because we're going to use that same image for several different tiles so we'll be able to refer back to that and i've got three different kinds of tiles grass water and dirt and uh, i've got that variable to store the image so in setup i've just set up a, uh, a canvas that is 200 by 100 of course it's pixelated times four so it's actually four times that that's a little weird to have to do that math but it makes it look sort of pixelated which is what we want uh, and then I just added some gravity which we don't, we don't care about that right now so um, the next step is to actually use that image to make those different um, tiles so what I'll do is just set grass equal to a new group Oops. And the reason why I'm doing that is because a, a group is different than a sprite. A group is if you have lots of sprites that are the same. So you can imagine we'll have lots of individual grass chunks and we don't need to address them individually. So that's why it's a group. I'll make it um, make the collider equal to static so that it doesn't, you know, the grass doesn't fall off the screen or get uh, moved when it gets bumped into. And then we'll use this familiar uh, thing of a sprite sheet. And so even though this isn't a sprite with animation, we're using the same technique and the image is the one that we loaded earlier. And again, even though we're not adding animation right now, we do use the same add any um, for that, for this tile, or I mean, it's essentially a sprite, right? And we have all these different attributes that we can give it. We can say it's width is 16 because I know the file has 16 by 16 tiles. And then I can say which row and column. So if I kind of look over row 29, column one is like one of these grassy things. So I'll do row 29, whoops, column one, and that should pick out that item. Now we're used to putting in the number of frames here. If it was animated, we could do that. And I'll show an example of that later. And then the last thing is we say what the name of this tile is. When we make our tile map, uh, we want to be able to refer to grass as G. And um, let me just stop there and just, just kind of make a thing of grass. So the way that we do that is by setting up a new now I could make this a variable, right? Something equals new tiles, but I'm not gonna really refer back to it. So I'm just gonna do new tiles and I will say it's grass, 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 grass. I don't know how many that was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do 10. So that's it, just uh, maybe I'll do it again. So I've got two layers of grass, which isn't exactly what I want, but I'll do that. And then uh, there are some more more uh, parameters for this tiles uh, constructor, and we can look it up, but I can tell you that there's a width, so there's an X and a Y. Um, so I'll just say it's, I'll put a comment here because it's a little hard to read if you just put numbers in here. So that's the X and Y, and then the uh, dimensions, width and height. Okay, um, I think that's it. 
So let's see what happens. If I save, hey, I've got some grass. So I've got two layers of grass. Now, I can also say some of the grass is missing. I can just put dots in there, and that means those will have nothing. I think if I put spaces, it probably does the same thing. Yeah, but the dots are kind of nice because it's filled out. So this is how we can, you can imagine this represents the whole screen, especially if this was like a kind of side-scrolling game. Um, it would This would be maybe one screen of the game, or it could be a map that you're looking at from the top. So that's it. Let, let me add um, the water and dirt, which should look identical to this. So I'm just going to paste it. And um, actually, I'll use a VS Code trick here to have multiple cursors and change that to water. And then I'll go down here and change that to dirt. So I actually know that uh, water is at row 8, column 0. And dirt is at uh, oh and i want to make this maybe a w in my map below and i'll make d for dirt um column 30 should be dirt okay so let me just add some things here so i don't want grass underneath the grass i want probably dirt uh and then maybe i'll add some water here and maybe another layer of dirt and water and maybe one more of just dirt. It's not very interesting, but it's gonna maybe give us an example. So there we go. We've got something that's starting to look like <laughs> uh, game-like. Now, you know, if this is bothersome, then I'd wanna find a tile that maybe is, you know, rounded here so it doesn't look like it just cuts off. There's all kinds of, I mean, we can add as many tiles as we want. This is just a sample one that has lots of different ones, but they're all squares. And maybe I can uh, kind of add some transparency. You can see some of these tiles actually include, well, none of these include transparency, but all this area is transparent. So um, we can include transparency in here. So um, that's really it. Maybe I'll just add a, a thing, a sprite here, just to show that you can have something. Well, I guess I have to make it, um, let's say, let circle equals new sprite, and then circle. Oh, yeah, I know why it's not. I'm like, why isn't it falling? I think uh, it's not falling because I don't have gravity. So let me turn the gravity back on. So there it is. There's my ball. Um, I think that's it. Now, the, the last thing I'm going to show you is someone also asked about how you can have a background image without having to make individual tiles. So that feels related to this. Um, maybe I'll just jump over to Photoshop and show how you might do that. Uh, first, let's find a, an image of clouds. There's an image. So let's see. Um, I will copy image. And then over in Photoshop, I'll make a new file and just paste it. So obviously, if I paste that in the background, it's going to look a little weird um, in the context of all this pixelated stuff. So uh, let's first think about the fact that this, the canvas right now is 200 by 100. It gets blown up by 4, and that's so it has this pixelated look. But let's say it's 200 by 100. So I think the first thing to do would maybe be to resize this to 200 to 100. Uh, there are much better ways to do this, but I'm going to show you maybe a really simple way. So now it's 200 by almost 100. Let me just change the canvas size so it's actually 100. And now we've got a 200 by 100 image. And what I could do at this point is um, there are lots of filters and so on to make it look pixelated. But I think the easiest way is to go to Export, Save for Web. And if you do this, there's an option to save it as a GIF, and you can tell it how many colors. So instead of 256 colors, maybe it only has four colors, or I guess you could even do like two, um, but I think maybe four is closer to what we've got. And you can see it's kind of like pixelating it, uh, I'm sorry, dithering it. You can see, let's see if we can zoom in here. Uh, fit in view. Nope. Uh, Okay, so yeah, we can see that it's kind of adding this dithering. If I didn't like that, I could remove that, but this is an easy way to get kind of like this pixelated cloud look at least. So I'll hit save, and I will save that. Yeah, that's where I am. So let me save it as 
clouds.gif. Now, this only works with a GIF um, because you can limit the specific number of colors. I don't think you can do this with a PNG, but you could always just open this file again and save it as a PNG. GIF files are usually bigger, so maybe this isn't ideal, but right now it's going to work. And uh, let me go over to my game and also add some clouds. So I will let clouds and set that to uh, this new image that I've got. And I think all I need to do at this point is maybe instead of clear, I can use uh, image to show the image on the screen, which will be uh, clouds. And I'll show it in the upper left. And there we go. We've got some clouds. It doesn't look great, but uh, you know, this part actually kind of looks good, but this dithering didn't work out. But I could always go back and edit that file. I think maybe the contrast is very weird too, but um, let's see what it looks like without any water. It's kind of causing a conflict there. Yeah. So that's anyway how you could make something that looks equally pixelated and um, you could tweak the colors so they kind of look better together. You could also edit this file in Photoshop after you've saved it as a GIF to get rid of the uh, dithering if you didn't like that. And you can also resave it as a PNG if you want to reduce the file size. Okay, I think that's it about tiles and, uh, and kind of a tiled looking background. Good luck.